success for me is, is what makes me, as one of the seven billion people on this planet, feel good, feel right, feel fulfilled, feel complete, if that makes any sense. Two mates are on a mission to figure out how 10 Aussie icons in completely different fields broke away from the pack. We want to dig deeper, see if anyone can do what they've done and figure out their common thread. Simon McKeon is one of Australia's leading investment bankers and philanthropists. He rose through the ranks at Macquarie Bank to become executive director of its Melbourne office and has chaired boards of multi-billion dollar companies like financial services giant AMP and software giant MYOB. In addition to his work in the private sector, he was recognised as 2011's Australian of the Year for his continued commitment to the public and not-for-profit sectors. He has contributed his time at varying levels across more than 50 government and not-for-profit organisations. He is a high achiever who, even with his favourite pastime of sailing, has broken world records, having held the world speed sailing record for over a decade. Right, so we're all suited up. So let's get in there to the Millionaire's Factory in Melbourne CBD. Absolutely. After a quick check-in at Simon's old school, we locked horns with him on his home turf in Melbourne's capitalist mecca, 101 Collins Street. We were keen to hear how a banker's views on success compared with those of the fearless sailors from our last episode with Jessica Watson. Why do you think investment banking is such a sought after profession? Well, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Certainly once upon a time, might be not quite at the moment, but uh, you know, it, it's been highly remunerative. Um, and I'm not going to deny the fact that that was of interest to me because it would open up possibilities as to how I spent my time later on. It wasn't my sole motivation, probably not even the most important mot motivation, but it was, it, was a, it was one of them. What advice can you give young people wanting to become investment bankers? Well, don't do it because someone says you should do it. <laughs> uh, do it because based on whatever you feel comfortable about, your strengths, weaknesses, whatever, um, do it because that all adds up. We live in a society which tolerates people changing their direction. We don't live in the, you know, I'm going to serve my entire life for Toyota uh, era at all. And, uh, and I think that's a healthy thing. Would you say then that, that that luxury that comes with being at the top of an investment bank is more motivating to keep you in the game going forward than being able to create wealth? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I um, you know, really don't think about wealth much anymore. Um, what I do think about is, is my relevance. Uh, that's what gets me out of bed. If again, what is going to be fulfilling for me? It was interesting to have an insight into Simon's motivations. Similar to Jerry Harvey and Alan Bond's answers, being financially independent was a way of freeing up time to spend on other pursuits. Being relevant seemed to be a more important driver. All right, to a remarkable insight into a Melbourne man who until just a few days ago was not widely known. 2011 Australian of the Year Simon McKeon is a man on a mission to improve the lives of others. Just giving a little bit of myself to others uh, on a purely discretionary basis. I don't have to, but it just seems to be the right thing to do. Simon, are you a businessman first or a philanthropist first? <laughs> it, it depends what time of the day you're asking me because I, I actually often ask myself that question. What, what deep down is the most important driver for me? And you know what? I think it just changes. All I know is that when I get out of touch with myself, when I um, you know, start marching to someone else's drum, society's drum, expectations from others, then I just feel that uh, you know, I'm losing the plot a bit. You are the father of four kids. You lead around 10 major not-for-profits and obviously you do a lot of work with Macquarie. And, and I noticed you've said you've, you're not a morning person. So <laughs> how is it that you find the time and energy to fit everything in? 
In each and everything I do, I actually operate in a team. Time management is something that many people have to deal with. Um, and, you know, for me, it's just a matter of being sensible. Yep, there's always a few balls in the air. Can't do everything. But what I do know is that when I'm involved in really good teams, it's amazing how much those teams collectively can, can achieve. Like Jessica Watson, the people Simon has worked with have helped him achieve his goals. The thing that stood out to us was how his goals were often about helping others. In 1994, at the age of 40, Simon went part-time with his banking job so he could spend two to three days a week on other projects. But shortly after this career shift, he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Although it's had little impact on his daily life, he's thrown himself at finding a cure for the condition. He was the founding chair of MS Research Australia and received its highest honour, the John Study Award, in 2010. We were amazed at how he's been able to strike a balance between leading a successful banking career and carving out time for the causes he cares most about. We wondered if there was a lesson here for us. Philanthropists, are they more successful and influential when they devote their time as opposed just to their money? Oh, yeah, look, that is a really good question. People have often suggested to me how I should spend my time, and, and I'm grateful for the advice, but I, it's up to me to work that out. Sitting on a World Vision board and saying, should we allocate that much money to that country versus that country, whether that's actually any more profound than sitting down with someone, just one person, and letting them pour their heart out. You know, I actually find it difficult to compare. The, the dollars are bigger on the former example, obviously. The number of lives, at least indirectly affected, might be greater. But I'm not, you know, I think it's important sometimes to leave the pure business brain behind on those sorts of comparisons and, uh, and, and analyse it separately. But what I do want to say, though, is that for it to be enduring, for it to, you know, for it to be rewarding, I think everybody should have an opportunity to get that dirt under their fingernails as well. If my only existence in the, in, in the non-for-profit sector was to sit on boards making high-level decisions, it would actually be lacking. You know, just it would be part of the experience, but it wouldn't be the whole experience. From a young age, Simon has always been motivated to make a difference, and he's walked the talk when it comes to giving back. Not only is he spending time in the boardrooms of charities, but he's also on the front line, meeting face-to-face -face with people in need, like when he gives his time as a counsellor to heroin addicts at a local clinic. He made us want to lift our own game, and we reckon this is why he also received Order of Australia honours. He's an example to the rest of us. But it can't have all been smooth sailing to do what he's done. So you could argue that um, you have been recognised for your achievements because of the balance that you've been able to maintain across the three sectors. Mm. How have you handled the people that haven't shared your vision? Never a day goes by where I don't have a difference of opinion with someone. And it's all a matter of how they're handled rather than um, trying to go through life hoping you'll never have a, a disagreement with anyone. And, uh, and empathy is really, really important. There's seven billion of us. And for whatever reason, we're all wired a little bit differently. We reckon it's the empathy that Simon brings to the table that makes him special. Like the Honourable Michael Kirby and Dr Fiona Wood, he's got a big heart and throws himself at opportunities that make a difference in people's lives. I'm humbled because I'm just one of a great army of Australians who are involved in the non-for-profit sector. And this sector has given me much, much more than I've ever contributed to it. I've been privileged to work alongside gifted and committed Australians. I have been inspired as I've seen hope conquer despair. What do you consider your main drive for all the charitable work that you do? It's actually difficult for me to explain it other than to say that I, you know, I can feel deep down a sense of um, irritation or grumpiness with myself when I'm just not giving a bit um, I'm like everybody else, you know, I like watching a good AFL footy match, I like sailing, I like, you know, having a good time. But if that's my entire life, I actually start feeling 
a bit, um, yeah, just a, just a bit unfulfilled, a bit uh, as if something's missing. And so I'm just forever just trying to keep that balance right. Simon McKeon has led a remarkable life, balancing his time across a wide range of interests. While he could have just stuck to his profession, he's continually chosen to benefit others. With everyone Jack and I met, we found their motivation to be a key thread to their success. You've got to have a reason why you want to seek out and conquer the hardest challenges. Making motivation a common thread. You held the record for the fastest sailing vessel over a 500 metre yeah, distance. That's correct, yeah. Do you know who holds the current world record? I'm actually not sure. It's an American by the name of Rob Douglas. Right. And he wanted us to pass on a message. He's got a bit of cheek about him because he says, Simon, rig bigger. That is unbelievable. We're hoping that perhaps you could, <laughs> you could take it up to Rob and uh, well, turn it around and, and put that Aussie flag back on that world record. But go back to Rob and say, what a pathetic little boat he's got. <laughs> and just wait. That's uh, fabulous, fantastic. I can't believe that. Brilliant. Thank you.